All right, what is going on everyone? It's been a while since we've done this, but it's time to do a bit more updates with how I'm going with my injury, what's going on at home and where we're at with everything. Now, I've been wanting to do more of these and obviously after the accident happened, I kind of kept everyone up to date, kind of day by day as it was progressing. Now, when I got home, I kind of, I wanted to keep going with that, but I also... We'll be completely honest, I was struggling a little bit. Motivation wasn't there. I wasn't seeing improvements as quickly as I would have liked. So I was getting a bit down on that as well. So I kind of didn't want to put myself online. I just wanted to have the time to kind of rest, do the work on myself, be around. My mum was here, I've been doing rehab stuff. I've been seeing people. So I was kind of focusing more on that. And I really don't like to put myself out there when I'm not being my best authentic self. And I know there's times when it gets tough and hard and you've kind of got to show that to a certain degree as well. But I just didn't want to be the person rocking up online or on YouTube, Instagram, whatever, and just complaining about the situation because it was, it, it is, and it was tough for some, some days. And definitely got me down and didn't see improvements and you kind of lose sight into the the light at the end of the tunnel. You get those wins every now and again, it kind of puts you back on this, okay, we are going in the right direction and we are making improvements. And like a couple of days ago, I finally got temperature back in my body so I can actually feel heat again for the first time in about three weeks. So I was laying in bed and I, I finally got hot. Like I haven't been, it's such a weird thing concept to think of that in the last three weeks, I've not been hot once. Like I've just always been cold or kind of numb. So just that alone was a massive improvement for me and something that felt great. So to have that come back was awesome. Uh, I've got more movement in my hands again. Like you remember the, the videos, how bad that was and still obviously not 100%, but just, just the strengths coming back, the movements coming back and just those couple things combined definitely picked me up and put me on a bit more of a high. I actually recorded this same thing that I'm recording now a couple of days ago and I actually just couldn't put it out. Like I recorded it, looked at it and I'm like, I don't want to be that guy that brings this negativity or this, this like mopiness in a way. But it also, it made me realize how easy it is to fall into the victim mentality when you have an injury or you have to overcome something and almost people justify that it's okay to feel that way. Now, I've always said it's never okay to make someone feel they should be a victim, no matter what that situation is. Because I think once you give someone the power to feel victimized, even unintentionally, they will grab a hold of that and they will use it and it will become part of their identity as I'm the injured person or I'm the sad person or I'm the broken person or I'm, that's part of who they are. So I don't think it's healthy to hang on to that. And it's so easy to, when you're in this situation, like so many people justified to me that it was okay that I was feeling this way, or it's okay that you're going through that because what happened I just don't think it is. I think it's it's okay to get better and to feel good. And yes, you have to feel those feelings at a certain point, but I don't think it's healthy to be made out to feel like it's okay to stay in that. For example, like the biggest reason I wanted to take the neck brace off as soon as I did was because I hated the reaction it got from people. Whenever I'd meet people in it, they would instantly look at you differently and even talk to you differently and even touch you differently in a way of like a hug or a handshake. You can just tell that they're trying to be empathetic towards what's happened, but at the same time, they're just making you feel so different and so kind of just not normal in that way. So that kind of leads into that I don't want to go out. I don't want to see people. I don't want to be in that environment. I don't want to keep repeating the same thing. I don't want to keep reliving the the accident or what happened and because you do you become so attached to that and people feeling sorry for you and then getting some joy out of people feeling sorry for you and then you feel sorry for yourself so it's a super slippery slope to go down and I definitely saw myself especially last week I had some really bad days where I couldn't even kind of fake being happy people ask me how I go uh, how I was going and I was just like shit I'm not going good and I hate being that person I hate being that person that brings others down because of my own issues and insecurities and and pain and whatever it may be but it was just where I was at and I'm glad that I'm feel like I'm coming out the other side more now like obviously you see I'm out of the neck brace I've got movement I'm working with Jono Butler to get the body moving again. I'm seeing a guy, Rob, down in Cooley that's helping with acupuncture and massage. And we're definitely, we're definitely coming out the other side now, which is, which is great. But we, 
We've had some we've had some dark days there where it does make you really look at yourself and what you're doing and then what you're justifying and then what people around you are also justifying is okay. So coming out the other side now, I want to be more myself again and more positive and actually go after the things I know I need to go after and not feel like I've got these excuses why I can't that are built in through either the injury or circumstance or whatever else they may be. So yeah, moving forward now, coming out of it, hopefully keep progressing the way I'm going now and really start to get some strength back in my hands and some proper feeling back in the rest of my body. My skin is still super sensitive. It's like when you have a really bad fever and it's just temperature, whether it be hot or cold, is quite sensitive to it. So if I hop in the ocean, it's just like a quite a, a, a harsh shock. Or even if I put hot water in the shower, it's quite a harsh shock so and even like a really actually something that i didn't realize but when i put on deodorant like the cold like stuff like that like it makes my skin kind of cruel in a way so stuff like that's still not quite there but definitely a hundred times better than when i first got home so we're definitely on the mend and we're getting better just getting the mind in the right place to to beat this and and to get, come through it because that's probably been the toughest butt battle is just that mental game of I guess showing up and wanting to show up and not being too hard on yourself for not doing the things that I guess you think you should be doing in these moments and then but then also being accountable for the things you know you can do because I can see that how it's such a slippery slope to let one thing go and then that suddenly becomes another thing and then you're kind of in this pity party with yourself just saying oh it's okay and then people coming in and justifying what you're doing is okay and yeah I just don't I don't want to go back into that even though it was very brief you can you can I can see when you go in and how it's easy to stay there and then as soon as I got out of it I'm like all right we're not going back there we don't need to be in that that place and that that mindset so it's good now we've come out of it like I said the body is feeling a lot better we've got a lot more movement in the neck and a lot more feeling throughout the body there's still a long way to go but we're making some good progress now and yeah I just wanted to keep everyone up to date with what's going on and and try and do more of these and document the journey out of this and then what I want to do next because I want to do something that's quite physically demanding. So it'd be cool to come out of the body being completely shut off to then coming back and do something that would be <laughs> would, would be hard even if in the best of days. So that's the goal and that's what we're kind of setting towards. So hopefully early next year we'll be able to get something done in that space. But also... I got asked a lot of questions. I put up a post recently that we were supposed to record. Me and Devin Cooper recorded a podcast. Where we record, recorded it was actually in the middle of nowhere. We had no service, so I couldn't answer the questions on the podcast, but I'm going to answer them now, and then the podcast with Devin's going to come out in a couple of days. But we'll answer the questions here, and then we kind of touch on most of this as well in the podcast, but we'll, we'll let that come out in a couple of days. The first one, has the UCI been in contact and helped in any way? The UCI hasn't been in contact with me. I actually have to get had to get in contact with them about an inc an accident report after the incident because of insurance reasons haven't seen that yet though so that was about a week or two ago that I've, I've asked to just get something so when I claim the insurance for the helicopter ride and the, the medical treatment that we've got some information and documentation to go along with it but haven't heard back from them with that and hadn't really heard anything else it's kind of yeah a little bit sad that you can have such a major in injury and and something like that and no one even reaches out to see if you're all good so yeah it would, would have been nice to feel a little bit more cared for I guess to to be throwing your your life on the line for their event and yeah I know I get what I get out of it but just a are you okay or or something but yeah I reached out to them to try and get some information and haven't got it yet that's just how it goes sometimes with such a difficult season for you what are you proud of this year I'm proud of making a decision to retire and not just trying to hold on to something that's not there I knew at the start of the year that I was definitely questioning what I wanted to do. I actually got offered last year a two-year contract with Scott before obviously this season. I decided to just get a one year because I was very up in the air about what I wanted to do and I kind of knew I was like either I'm going to go out and have a great year and be on top of the world and then I'll sign another deal or I'll know and if I and once I know then I should probably get out so went to the first three races realized pretty quickly that my heart wasn't in this anymore I wasn't willing to push like I used to I was just not there came home made the decision to retire and then when I actually made the decision it made the next three races the best races I had all year and I actually enjoyed it again there's no pressure I didn't feel like I needed to get a ride I didn't feel like I needed to impress anyone I was just like I'm just gonna go have fun ride my bike try my my best and have a good time and it actually made it way more enjoyable so I was proud about 
I was proud about how I looked at what I wanted to do and just made the call to do it and kind of left on my terms and not anyone else's. So I'm proud of myself for actually biting the bullet there and, and making it happen. Is your future now a one that will lead in an even more creative area now that you're not racing? Yeah, I want to do more of the podcast. This is something that I'm really passionate about. I like sharing stories. I like sharing ideas. I like getting just learning from other people that have done cool and exciting things. And I feel like I can create quite a safe space for people to open up and talk. So I always say work with your skills and work with your work with what you have. And if you have something to bring to the table, use that as much as you can and work to your strengths. That's what I was meant to say. And that's something I'm going towards. I've just spent maybe like 13 grand on camera equipment and gear to start setting up a proper studio that I'll be able to record in. Just in the in the current situation of looking for a warehouse in Burley or Corumbin or just around the Gold Coast area to set up a studio. And once that's set up, I'll hopefully be producing like high quality content uh, and podcast and everything else that comes along with it. So that's the goal now. We just kind of, we're in the middle of it. It's also hard to to plan all this and do all this while I kind of, I don't have that much energy, like the injury is still the priority to get that sorted. But in the background, we're definitely sorting out a little little bits here and there. And then when I'm back to hundred percent, we'll be able to dive straight into it. Are you going to continue to ride bikes for fun when you are healed? I think eventually, I think eventually I'll get back into bike rate, like riding for sure. Don't know about racing. I'm still honestly a bit nervous. Like I watched the Vic series race at bar jug this weekend and people doing this coffin gap. And I'm just, that used to be something I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. And now I look at it, I'm like, I don't want to do that. That just looks That looks sketchy and I've noticed that things that used to not look scary look scary now. So I don't know how much I want to push myself, especially coming off such a serious injury. I don't want to dive back into another one. So I don't know if I'll race again or for how long or when I'll do that, but I'm sure eventually I'm going to start riding bikes probably e-bikes and probably in Derby. I think that's going to be a definite, but just how long away that is, is very unknown. But we're going to rest first, we'll get healthy and then we'll come back. What's the situation with insurance and healthcare costs? If that's not too personal, wish you all the best. Uh, I've got insurance, which is good for when I was over there. I'm just trying to work out like, with the hospital and I haven't even got how much it's going to cost. American healthcare system is a bit weird. They just send you in the mail, the the billing. So I'm waiting for that. It's probably going to be from 10 to 20 grand for the helicopter ride and everything else. But I haven't got the medical information I need to actually do the claim. So I need that as well. So it's a bit, it should all be paid for from what I'm covered with, but it's just trying to get all the documentation and information through the hospital and everyone else that's there. So we'll have to wait and see, but it should get, It should pan out, hopefully. Why are you retiring? My heart's not in it anymore. I don't enjoy it like I used to, and I don't want to push myself to where I know you need to push yourself to be anywhere near the guys at the top these days. It's. I remember at Lenza Hyde, I watched Jordan Williams run, and I remember Sam Purdy was there filming, and I just looked at him, and I just said to him, and it was kind of a joke, but at the same time, I was like, I don't want to go that fast. Like I saw how fast he was going and how hard he was pushing. And that's something that I used to inspire, inspire to be that. And I could always feel, I always felt like I could push as fast as the top guys. And I saw that and it wasn't even like I felt I couldn't. It's like I didn't want to. So I thought, okay, this is time to probably to change it up. How's your mindset helped you through this accident? It helps pulling me out of the dark times. I think it just leaves me like a bit of a life vest in the, in the hard times. I go into really dark places sometimes and boohoo and everything sucks and then I guess I use gratitude and perspective and everything else that comes along with it to pull me back out of it but I definitely go to those state like those states of mind and I definitely can get stuck in them sometimes for longer than I would like but I seem to always be able to pull myself out and and look at the bigger picture like I when I crashed my biggest focus and my biggest goal as I laid there was to just be able to use my arms and legs And one of the coolest things about the accident was everything else that I thought I needed or wanted in my life suddenly just left. There was no want, desire, need for anything else besides the use of my arms and legs. That was it. And everything else I was worried about at that current time suddenly just went out the window like that. And it didn't, it would come back now and again in fear of not being able to use my arms and legs and then kind of what's going to happen now and then it would go blank again and this would go around 
in circles and then I'd try and focus on just the little things. Like I remember looking up at the sky and I just remember focusing on like the wind in the, with the leaves and the sun on my skin in certain moments and just these little things that you realize can pull you out of anything. Because in that moment I was terrified and then I was at peace and then I was calm and then I was worried and then all these different emotions that kept swirling around. It was just like they'd go around in a circle. But I remember there was a few moments when I just had nothing on my mind, nothing in my brain, like it was just blank. And I just focus on like, yeah, the leaves and the wind and the sun on my skin and these little things that I could pull some happiness out of that was was quite cool to to be in that but i think that comes back to yeah, the mindset of how you can you can pick good things out of anything there's always a silver lining in some way so it was cool to be able to see that in those moments which i was yeah i can i guess yeah your mindset can put you put you in those moments how do you think this will affect your relationship with writing in the future i think it's just going to leave a lot of time before n- between now and when I do hop back on a bike, I just don't think it's going to be something that's going to happen quickly. I don't have the want or need to hop on a bike for a while, but I just want to get back on when I feel like I want to be racing or riding or like I, w- I want to I want to do it when I want to do it, not for any other outside reason. So I think it's just going to be a while, but I'm sure one day we will we'll get back on a mountain bike. Do you believe that you will grow grow mentally from such a scary and traumatic experience? For sure. I, I really see appreciating the small things like in that moment when I said I was laying there like appreciating all the little things that was in like those leaves and the sun and and the fact that I do get to use my body again and it probably sounds a little bit over dramatic now because of how I'm recovering but for those 10 minutes when I had to sort like I could just had a sore neck and no feeling the rest of my body I was pretty convinced that I'd broken my neck and that the possibility of not walking again was very real so to have that is like a center point like to base yourself off where that's how bad it could have been and you come back to that and you go okay well i've got my legs i've got my arms i'm getting feeling back it's all going to be okay you look at that and you go how can't you have a better perspective on how lucky you are and how good your life can be it's definitely i feel like i appreciate life pretty well already but that's definitely given me even more perspective on how good it actually is and how lucky i was to walk away well not walk away get stretch it away <laughs> from that situation and come out the other side okay so I'm always going to have a different perspective on how good my life is and how lucky I was in that moment as bad as it was at the time but as good as it's going to be in the future would a neck brace have helped you help or hindrance is it possible to race with them well people do race with neck braces and they probably could have helped like I'm sure it would have but then if the neck brace also stopped my neck I might have put more force into my skull because I hit it quite front on so obviously the neck moving down and did stretch my spinal cord but if that stops then there's more force straight into my brain so it's kind of hard to tell exactly what is better and what is worse and I know a lot of people that wear neck braces do break collarbones even when the impact isn't as hard as I guess it could have been to break your neck. So it's it's a tricky one. I'm kind of on the fence. I don't think I would ride with a neck brace. I used to race with a neck brace and they kind of felt a bit uncomfortable and clunky and moved around a lot. So I'd probably stick to not wearing one, but I also, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of, kind of neutral on that one. I don't want to wear one, but I can see how it could be beneficial. Was it right for the medical crew to move you? Did they do it in the correct way? I thought a lot of people were giving me heat not me heat but they were giving the medical medical crew a bit of heat for moving me so quickly now in my opinion i'm glad they did move me i was obviously asking them to help me i was in a lot of pain in my neck i was in an awkward position i couldn't breathe properly because my legs were over my head like a damn lawn chair it was it was not a good way to be so for them to help me and move me and flatten me out definitely took me out of the panic state and i think how they controlled my neck they held my neck there was about four people that were helping like lay me back down because I was like how long do you leave someone in that situation like all these people was like they moved you too quickly and I just was like well what would you have done would you have just left me folded like that with my neck already in a terrible position or would you have stabilized my neck help spin me around and lay me flat and then put a brace on me and do I think I think they did an excellent job and I'm happy with how they spoke with me and how they calmed me down and how they looked after me. I can understand. I see people's concern with moving me out of that position quite quickly, but I also am very grateful that I did. And it took me out of that shock state 
quicker than if I got stuck there and was in that position because that was that was terrifying for that for those brief moments. But I think I think the medical crew did a great job. Was it the right decision to remove the helmet immediately? They didn't really move it remove it immediately. I think it was on there for a while and they were feeling my neck and they felt around the back and they were kind of talking to me about what hurt and what felt all right and then they removed my helmet so i wouldn't say it was immediate but they definitely did some checks before they took it off i still thought what they did was the right thing what was your first thought when you realized about your spinal cord injury well i didn't know it was a spinal cord injury until i got to hospital but i think when you shut your entire body off <laughs> and go limp you kind of feel like the the spinal cord's probably got something to do with it i was just very scared to be honest i was in that position i couldn't move i've never felt numbness through my whole body like that so i was terrified i thought i'd like i said i'd broken my neck i thought i was going to be paralyzed for the rest of my life and that was kind of the only thoughts going around my head until i kind of got laid down and flattened out and then started to try and like find some silver lining in it all through like i said the leaves and the sun and just breath and just trying to calm myself down but i definitely got angry at myself because I was like you had four days left you had the race day and then you had three days at Mont Anne and this whole career was done and I remember thinking that and getting so angry at my myself because I just thought I'd paralyze myself forever with four days to go I'm like you dickhead <laughs> so I got angry at myself and then slowly but surely yeah kind of got over it and then once my feelings started to come back I thought okay it's not as bad as we first thought and we're gonna we're gonna be okay were you angry when you couldn't feel anything because you're, yeah, yeah, I was about, yeah, this guy just asked me that. No, I was pissed off. I was angry. But then I was like, what is going to be is going to be and everything happens for a reason. And I thought to myself, I actually prayed. I prayed to God and I'm, I'm not religious and I don't, I've never prayed before, but I thought if ever there was a time and I just said, if you help me and give me back my arms and my legs, I'll help as many people as I possibly can. So got a debt to pay now so i better start helping some people what are your thoughts on the first responders of snowshoe compared to other venues i thought they were great a look at what happened to brooke and him getting stuck on the hill for out like i think it was over an hour or so so i was out there i was out of there pretty quickly i was on a stretcher i was on a four-wheeler and then an ambulance and a helicopter pretty quickly so within an hour I, like within the crash to them being at the hospital was maybe an hour or so it wasn't very long he was on the side of the hill before he even got any medical attention or helicoptered out for i think over an hour did I get the medic girl's number? No, I didn't get the medic girl's number, but she was really lovely and just very caring. I know she was scared as well. Just the fact is she could see how scared I was. And I remember when she picked up my hands and asked me to squeeze her fingers and then my hands just dropped back on my chest. And I think she was like, ah, oh, this is, uh, this is not good. And <laughs> I definitely felt the same way. So yeah, there were some scary moments, just those things when obviously I've been in crashes before and people tell you to squeeze their hands and you can squeeze softly, but this was, there was nothing. There was no response. There was nothing there. So that was, that was a little bit scary. Based on what Brooke went through, was the emergency care a lot faster? Yeah. That's like I just touched on before. It was way faster and way quicker and I think easier. And yeah, it was definitely not a nightmare like I think he went through. So I'm, I'm glad that I got much better care and service than, than what happened with Brooke, unfortunately. How do I think this is going to change my outlook on life in general? Just more appreciative of the little things. I think being an athlete, you get lost in, you always want to win. You always want to do better. You always want to be at the top. You want more, 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 more. And it's this thing that we all feed into and we all become okay with, but it's just like, it's just the little stuff that's always there that's right in front of us that we don't even notice that I think that's one of the biggest things, appreciating the small things. And that could be a walk on the beach, a hug from a friend, writing a letter to something, like just little stuff like that, but really feeling it and really understanding how good that is and appreciating it and how it makes someone else feel and how it makes you feel and not being so caught up in this, I didn't win the race, so now this whole expedition and this whole trip and this whole thing is now pointless and wasted. It's like, look at all the amazing people you got to meet and all the places you've gone and everything that you've been a part of. And now appreciate that and sit in that. Like I just did a podcast that's about to be released with Josh, Joshy Froffer. And we talk about how he kind of looks at things in hindsight, but in the present and how good all these little things are. And I think if we could all do that more, I think we'd appreciate life a lot more. And it's kind of sad that we, it has to have something so major as a crash like this to kind of bring us back or bring me back and go, oh shit, it actually 
is just really good. Like the bare minimum of just having your body is amazing and that we shouldn't get so lost in all these other things we think we need because we don't really need them in the, at the end of the day. I think that's definitely going to change my, my perspective and, my, and shifted to even be more grateful for what I do have. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys got a little bit more filled in on where I'm at with everything. And like I said, I'm feeling a lot better back in high spirits, back chipping away, back feel like we're making it somewhere. And yeah, I don't think it's going to be too long until we are back to that 100%. I'm excited to start training again, to get the body firing, to get the body moving and just be productive again and, and start doing the thing with the podcast and just get the life, get life back to normal and get it firing for the summer. So I want to do more of these for sure. I'm feeling like I'm myself again and I can actually talk. Like I said, I did this the other day and I'd watched it back and I was like, what are you doing and what are you saying? And you just, I don't want to, portray that and put that out so we're going to put out more positive stuff we're going to keep this going we're going to keep putting the content out there so love and appreciate all of you and i'll talk to you very soon cheers everyone bye now